letter press. Tips and tricks. Here's what I like to do. Having all sorts of fun in the studio. Stukenberg Press. Speedcoin Graduation. Nerd Alert number one. While most letterpress printers will find this tip handy, this video will be most useful to folks who are composing large forms using movable type and printing additions with three or more passes of color. This is Handset 14 Point News Gothic Extra Condensed, alongside Alternate Gothic number one. They're part of this old poster of mine with a lot of other type. You can probably see that there were lots and lots of things to keep track of while setting up each pass of color. Nerd alert number two. I am not saying that speed coins are better than classic coins. I worked for years with tooth wedges while at Yeehaw Industries, and I made work like this happen. Accurate registration is always just about paying attention as you work. This video, though, is about a little attribute of speed coins that I really like to take advantage of. There's a little dot that moves back and forth along these numbers. These numbers actually do correspond to how many points of expansion the coin is gaining while you turn the key. For a long while when locking up my forms, I'd pay attention to the graduation just enough to make sure that I wasn't going up near 10, because this is the range where the coin maxes out and will stop itself. It'll give you a false sense of snugness in your form. Um, if it's ever too near 10, I'd say just throw a slug beside your coin to bring it back near the middle of the scale. Be sure and take note that this number 10 we're talking about, it's not inherently tighter than any other number on the graduation. The number only tells you how far you are currently expanded. Inside the speed coin, there are two banks of multiple wedges, and these are sliding against each other. And the number just notes to you how far they can move within the current situation that you've built on the press. I often tell my students that we're just aiming for snug plus. So there is a Goldilocks zone not too loose and not too tight. If you over tighten your coins, your form will begin to heave upwards in the middle a little bit, and just the slightest rise will lead to lots and lots of problems. Things move just a bit as the squeeze happens. Inside a large form of handset type, a little bit of expansion or compression that isn't controlled can become problematic when registering a third or fourth color of ink. When locking up a base for photopolymer plates, you don't have to worry about the squeeze affecting any of the elements within the design. But it really comes into play during color separations for things like posters with lots of small handset parts. When preparing sections to print during their turn, you'll be swapping in and out accurately measured placeholders. Hopefully you'll be thinking of the whole composition as having a captive dimension that you try to maintain. But if you aren't tightening your coins to the same position between passes of color, much of your careful measuring will appear faulty. What I like to do is swipe a bit of marker along the edge of the coin gauge across from the numbers. And while my whole composition is at the proofing stage and still completely intact, I find the sweet spot, the one that I'll want to use for the duration of the print edition, and mark exactly where the traveling dot should rest. This will make it easy to be sure that as I open and close my coins to exchange portions of the composition, I'll always be returning to a true and known position. So I end up with this, and not this. Thanks for watching my video. Whoa, thanks for watching my video. If you want to see more letterpress related stuff like this, please do subscribe to my little channel. It's just starting up. I'm in the process of finishing my first few videos, and I'd love for you to be there to see the next ones too.